What if like a fairy godmother came down from the sky <laughs> and she said, Jeanette, with one wave of my magic wand, I'm going to give you the perfect life. What would you say? There's a lot of worry nowadays that pneumophrenia could be caused by, inter by, by virtual reality and uh, some people have laughed this off as being, as being nonsense. How could people possibly confuse virtual reality with, uh, with real life? But it seems to me to be entirely possible. And here we are. So careful. Watch your step here. There's another one right here, so be careful. Now comes the fun part. You got some nice narrow steps for you, so just give me your hand. Couple more steps. Careful. I'm so glad to be back home. I bet. Come on, one more. Yeah, well done, Sir Edmund. Go on back. There's more. I can't believe you live in an antique. I know, right? Recording now. Apparently so. <laughs> I feel it looks awful. Ah, you look lovely. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. You feel it? Still a bit sore, but no, it doesn't feel any different. Ah, I don't do that. <laughs> I shouldn't still be tired after a week. I feel so lethargic. I'm not sure that's from the surgery. You were feeling tired even before. Mm. Maybe I'll book in some blood tests for tomorrow. See if anything's down. What? Come on, don't. Nothing. I couldn't delay it. I didn't say anything. I was waiting so long. I oh, know. This chip is such an opportunity to live my ancestors' experiences. Jeanette and Nicholas are real people, not just avatars. Look, you know I'm with you 100%. It just seems to me like an invasive way to achieve an inferior result. How is it inferior? to feel exactly what someone else has felt, firsthand. It's what my empathy study has been crying out for. Okay, are we okay with that? That's great, thank you. Thanks. So, Jeanette, are you happy to share with the group uh, your story, how you, you know, discovered the condition and so on? Okay. Um, well, I first found out that I had it um, when I was clearing out some boxes in the loft in my parents' house. I found the cases of the Memory Palace films that I watched when I was about 18. And um, the thing that first drew my attention to them was that the pictures on the front were of the guy, Douglas, who until really recently, I'd always thought was a really important person in my life and who'd existed. So university, huh? Mm -hmm. You excited? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And it was um, sociology, right? Yep. It's like studying people and cultures and yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I can handle that. <laughs> Me and crowds, just less people the better. Probably explains why I work in the ocean. <laughs> so what are you doing this summer? Better yet, what would you do this summer if you can do anything? Anything? Yeah. Oh, um, I'd travel somewhere amazing. Maybe South America. Mm. Or I'd go to a war zone somewhere. People really needed my help, you know? Yeah. Do something important. Wow. That's a good answer. I wasn't expecting that. Well, what about now? What do you do for fun? Um, I don't know. Go to the cinema with my friends. We've got a film club. Yeah. We like watching old films, you know? When I first realised I 
I had a fake memory. I just didn't want to believe for a long time that it wasn't real. You say that you think you've had pneumophrenia for about a year. Yeah. Why haven't you done anything before, like we've been doing, to try to come to terms? Shouldn't your primary drive be your pneumophrenia? Solve this thing rather than go and make a film about it? Well, no. My primary search is not for my own answers. My primary goal is to make an honest and truthful documentary. This is the first film that's actually going to show people that this condition even exists. Mm. And maybe from that, more people will come forward to say that they have it too. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my experience up to now is that I feel ashamed to have this. Okay, Anna, I'm Nicholas. Use VR since you were eight. Three or four hours every day, mostly travel experiences. Nemophrenic. Uh, discovered your nemophrenia ten years old. That's young. Yeah, I was ten. Okay. You're going to be testing a new virtual reality product called Total Cinema. Total Cinema is the next step in VR, and it uses the five main senses that we think about in everyday life. So not just sight and sound, but uh, also touch, taste, and smell to make the experience more complete as a, an actual event of your life. Wow. So this is the headset. Now the first thing we do is calibrate this to your brain patterns and then we give you a set of very simple experiences. Okay, so can I? Yeah. Is it the same as your headset? Oh, it's similar. Um, uh, mine provides a controlled data stream for the system. Ten years old, yeah? Yeah, I was ten. Was it difficult? No, not really. Really? I was fine with it. It was never really an issue. There was a time when I was a teenager and other people tried to make me feel there was something wrong with me, but as soon as I realized the problem wasn't mine, I was never conflicted about it again. That's great. It's really refreshing. Yeah, I'm actually so grateful for it. Grateful? That's a strange choice of word. Okay about it, maybe, but grateful? Why not? Nemophrenia isn't a disease, it's just a new way of being. It helps me be more than what I am. And the sooner people stop looking at it as something bad and start really using its potential, the better. I'm just... Just in a state of anxiety all the time, you know. I can't sleep. I can't concentrate on anything at all. And I think the problem is, is that I've watched so much VR, like four or five a week sometimes, that I don't even need to watch much of it anymore. And James is just completely embedded in my head, like he's everywhere. Mm. Um, you know, my family's met him, my friends have met him, my daughter's met him. You know, she gets on really well with it, but it's just none of them know it. And that's really fucked up. I experienced the cheating on my wife, uh, but then I wanted, I wanted to try it in real life as well. So, if I can just clarify, you had the experiences, and then you actually cheated on your wife. Is that what you're saying? That's, that's the way I think it happened, yes. Um, I feel guilty about the real ones. Real ones. <laughs> so, Jeanette, were you able to complete the task oh, that yeah. I set for you? Yeah, I did. I'll show you. Um, I made a sort of chart, like you suggested, of um, going back from when I met Douglas until the present day. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at it, it, I just feel like all my life choices have been taken away from me, really. Um, because going back to the beginning, I've put that I felt supported throughout my parents' problems because of him. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I had a phobia when I was young that I feel that he was a really big part of me overcoming. And then when I went to university, I was really spontaneous and courageous and that was as a result of knowing him. Um, I was attracted to older men because of him. And all these things lead on to stuff like the master's degree that I chose, the man that I married, everything that happens within my marriage, the fact that I'm divorced, the fact that I brought a baby into this world with somebody that I don't even love. So how does it feel to have to give him up now? I just feel really angry with the fact that knowing him affected what happens in my marriage because throughout my whole relationship I always compared my husband to Douglas unfavorably. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out that he wasn't even real, the shock of that just made me think I don't even want to be in this marriage anymore. Really refreshing. And our brain patterns are really interesting. Our brain patterns. It's just nice to hear that attitude. Yeah. Yeah, great attitude. But she's right, not a disease. That's what I've been saying for years. We're changing as a species. It just pisses me off that it's one more thing that divides us when, if it was harnessed, it could actually bring us together. Well, I didn't change. And I'm bloody glad I didn't. I'm actually like being able to tell the difference between reality and fiction. I find that kind of helpful. You sound like my parents. The universe doesn't have boxes, naturally. What's that? Square uniform boxes to put things in. Ideas, people. No straight lines in nature. Lots of round things, spirals, parabolas, cloud formations. <laughs> I hate boxes, don't you? That's very poetic. You should write that down. What were you just doing? There was something from my paper on expansion. I don't want to spoil it. I'd like you to try it too. Okay. You look beautiful today. Oh, I like it when you say that. I know. How's it going with Nicholas? Amazing. All my ideas about empathy, everything I'm researching, he was articulating it 50 years ago. All the benefits of nemophrenia that we take for granted, he was embracing it before anyone really understood these things. It was really ahead of his time. Yeah, it's inspiring. What's he like? He's quite shy, almost withdrawn sometimes. Except when he's talking about his ideas, then he can talk and talk. He has an infectious enthusiasm. And he's really attached to his grandmother. They have a special bond. Did you question your feelings towards your husband in the past? Yeah, I think I probably confused respect and admiration for love and passion. But then you still had choice. I mean, nobody removed choice from you. It's like you're just blaming something else for the decisions that you yourself have made. Okay, well, if we turn that into a, a question, uh, how would it feel if ultimately you have to take responsibility for your own choices? I just can't agree with that completely because I think that certain experiences that you have fundamentally change the way you think. Do you ever speak to your parents? No, I don't really. Um, I don't really have a relationship with them anymore. I can't remember the last time I even spoke to my dad. Yeah, I have a similar thing with my dad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He had an affair about a year ago. Gosh. My mum spoke to the woman and found out that he was planning to move to Australia with her. He just wanted to be away from us, I suppose. It's just terrible. I mean, they went to couple therapy and everything, and it all seems to be back to the way it was before, but... It's definitely changed the way me and my brother feel about him. I can understand that. So although he's with us now, 
I just think there must be loads of times where my mum must be wondering if he stayed out of duty, you know? I wonder if my dad really misses her. That woman. I think he really loved her. I kind of feel sorry for him. My mom married my dad when she was only 17. So like, she's only really ever known him, you know? You look at him now and I can't even imagine whatever brought them together in the first place. I think probably deep down I felt that it just wouldn't have worked. Because I was only 18. He was so free and independent and I think I was a bit scared of that freedom. I feel like I can really trust you. I think you might be the first actual friend I've made since moving out here. Yeah, I feel the same. It feels like an escape when I come to see you. We're missing a trick with Total Cinema. Could open up communication in a way that hasn't been possible yet. But it really needs to be open source. Oh God, not this again. <laughs> And bring it up again with Michael today. Man, you know what he's gonna say. You're wasting your breath. Look, as soon as this gets out there, someone will reverse engineer it. If they want to tinker with it in their garage, they will. That's not the point. I mean, a few people tinkering in their garage. It's not gonna change anything. What's getting to you today? A pretty girl walks in the door and all of a sudden you want to change the world. That's not her. It's not just her. What? Neck. What's up? FLM contacted me again. Really? What do they want? Same as always. They want to have a say. They want what we're doing to be open source. I agree with them. I don't agree with everything they say. You didn't reply to them, did you? I'm not stupid. I've never replied to them. Good. You need to keep away from them. Walk away, that, that's my advice. We're doing this for everyone, not just some minority. The moment you start aligning us with an organisation that advocates an all nemophrenic society, non nemophrenics such as myself, start to get a little bit edgy. You're right. You've got to ask yourself why they're contacting you. They know what they want, how to get it. They are politically minded. You, my friend, are not. You're just a technician. All they're going to do is use you. I'm telling you this as a friend. Walk away. Oh, I do like a rebel. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. And the more I use the chip, the better it responds. I'm not just viewing Jeanette and Nicholas. I really am them for those moments. Wow. <laughs> that is impressive. That's really going to be... Sorry, hang on, it's the doctor. Hello, Dr Moore? Robin, are you at home? Yes. Can you come to my office as soon as possible? When can you get here? Um, I could be there in... Is this for the results? What do they say? Yes, they're back. We should discuss them as soon as possible. Can you come today? Is it something bad? We really need to discuss it in person, Robin. Can Please you... Please tell me now, you're scaring me. I need to know now. Is it, is it something bad? I'm sorry, Robin. It's not good news. I'm going to send you some information now, and we can go through it, and then I'd like you to come to my office as soon as you can. Don't mope. 
You knew what he was gonna say. I'm proposing full open source. Nick, we've been through this over and over again. It's not gonna happen. How's Julia? Fine. It's okay. You worried it's gonna be born nemophrenic? If it happens, it happens. We'll just take precautions. No VR in childhood. He banned VR. I wasn't allowed VR until I was 15. I was angry about it at the time. But now, I'm pretty glad. Julia agrees with me. Dare say she would. I'm not anti nemophrenic If I was, I wouldn't be married to one. Even if the child wasn't predisposed, I'd still ban VR. I want to be able to share experiences with her before she goes off and experiences things that I can't possibly join in on. Wait, so you would hold back your child just because you can't join in? You forget we don't all think like you. I don't call it holding back. Without my nemophrenia and VR, I wouldn't be the person I am. I've had so many experiences that I wouldn't have otherwise had. Like my relationship with my grandmother. You know, we helped each other come to terms with how people saw us. And talking with her about her documentary was like the best guidance I ever had. And she helped me through college with my thesis. I wouldn't be where I am today without her. You helped each other. Sorry, but do you think she benefited from that experience? Uh, that bugs me. You didn't have an experience with her, with Jeanette Harper. It was with a VR, a simulation. It's not the same thing. It's not real. Where are you? I came outside and you were gone. Robin? I'm in the park. I needed a walk. Shall I come and find you? No. I'll be back soon. I wish you'd just listen to the expert. What is the point of having a doctor if you don't listen to them? I'm not taking the chip out and that's final. But if it makes it worse... This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to grab hold of something real. <laughs> if there's one thing that will make me worse, it's quitting my job and my research and then spending Whatever little time I have left obsessing about the fact that I'm dying. Don't say that. Stop putting your head in the sand. Look at me. This is my way of fighting it. I just want to continue this research and feel normal and try to use this recording to help make some sense of it. I actually have a unique opportunity here to record the experience of dying. All the emotions I'll go through, will go through, they'll be valuable assets for future studies. Please, I need you to understand this. I'm terrified. But if you take out the chip, and you work less, and you relax, you might get more time. I might get more time. Neither of us knows what's coming. What if you shorten the little time you have left, and then you don't even finish? 
then I'll have to work fast. These are some of our earlier prototypes. And uh, this is my work area. And this is it. Wow. What do you think? Unexpected. So this is the birthplace of Total Cinema. I built it from the ground up. It's taken me about nine years. The whole lab is a recording chamber. So where are the cameras? No, they're virtual. Okay. So the whole lab is a matrix of sensors and the space is sampled rather than filmed traditionally and the AI reconstructs the space in 3D from any angle, from any time. So you won't see any cameras. Are you controlling them with your headset? No, they're, they're independent AI. They just use my brainwaves for comparison algorithms. Uh, anyway, uh, how are you? Oh, uh, really good. The research is going really well and life is a bit more chilled. I'm getting more work-life balance. Cool. Okay. Uh, so there are still a few things I won't be able to go into in detail. Of course, yeah. Okay. So, cranial synaptic interference. Are you working towards recording real experiences? No, um, that's not possible yet. It's way in the future. Um, it's not, not part of TC. We never know what special projects you guys have got cooking in here. So my main thing today is testing. How many subjects have you tested it on? It's over 300 now. Uh, me and Will tested on ourselves first few years. And have you identified any potential health risks? No. Well, the same guidelines on duration of use still apply. There's a lot of traffic online to suggest the risks of inducing nemophrenia being more pronounced with cranial interference, even in people not predisposed. Uh, most people don't even have a clue what this is going to be. Uh, there's, um, you know, brain science is such a huge subject. We're, we're much further ahead than we were 50 years ago. So out of the 300 people tested, none showed any adverse effects? Adverse health risks. You know me well enough by now to know that I find those words inappropriate. It's this archaic attitude that says nymphrenia is a sickness, it's something to be feared and cured. Oh, Nick, you know we're never going to agree on this. The official line from Centro is nemophrenia is an adverse neurological condition. And just because there are people like you who can manage it... So I'm just managing it now? We're not saying it's a disease, but we do worry. And Mimo Film doesn't have a spotless record here. They knew about memory palaces even before it was launched. Well, honestly, I'd, I'd be careful about saying that. OK, this is off the record, but this is a public health matter. No study has conclusively shown an established link between okay, any memo okay. film product and nemophrenia, or that any memo film product has directly or indirectly caused any adverse neurological effects. Okay, Nick. They're not going to release anything unsafe, Kerry. I'm angry with memo film. At the end of the day, they gave them to me in the first place and then they just ripped them away and they've left me with this condition. And is that about Douglas or the whole experience? Well, yeah, I suppose it is Douglas. But it's more the things he represents, the ideals he holds for me. A really big part of my personality is encompassed in that person. And I'm just realising more and more how much I've denied myself the life I should have lived. I feel quite sad for Jeanette. She was alone and terrified. I feel her grief over Douglas very strongly. It must have completely broken her heart. They had such a connection.
Anyway, tell me about your research. Well, I'm getting some fantastic results from the wild walking experience. Have you had many subjects? Yeah, quite a few. This one woman, she was so anxious and stressed that her hair had started falling out. She responded beautifully. Her stress was all about not taking control, fear of being out of control. And you take someone like that, for whom wild walking will be their ultimate nightmare, and you give them the experience, not of wild walking, but of being a wild walker. Joyous feeling of being in her element, being in the moment. The energy flowing through her and the wire and the sky and the wind, all as one, total surrender. It's so easy to forget being in the moment with everything so automated. But wonderful to see someone in the act of recognising the beauty of being present. Sounds amazing. And her outcome? Off the chart. I mean, her anxiety is almost gone. Her hair's growing back. She's a different person. I was wondering if you'd like to try it. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I have time. I need to focus on work. I can't let that fall behind. You need to put yourself first. I am. Just because you would quit your job and go and meditate up a mountain doesn't mean that that's what I want to do. I never said that. My God. I'm becoming like her. I watched my VR films back. Oh, really? I, I didn't know you could do that. You said, how did that feel? Well, on the one hand, I think it's good that I did it. But emotionally, it's like I'm straight back there. It still feels as real as ever. I suppose I just want to be with him and keep having those experiences. Um, and then I remember it's not real and I just think there's no point to anything. Okay, so my worry would be that if it's taking you backwards, um, you know, my main concern would be that you, you're sort of starting again. It's the first nice thing I've done for years. I could totally escape from everything, you know. You're so lucky that you're so adventurous and confident. <laughs> I just got the will. You can have it too if you wanted it. You just need to go out there and grab it. And don't take life too seriously. It's all just a big illusion. Enjoy your walk. Yeah, it was really nice. I'm a bit worried about you going on your own. You look weaker lately. I mean, what if you take ill? What if you have a fall? You need to stop fussing over me. I think I should go with you next time. I actually enjoy going on my own. This is a new thing going for all these walks in the park. Is it? Do you think that's something that you're getting from Jeanette? Yeah, I suppose. She loves spending time in nature with Douglas. It's where she felt most in love with him. Well, as long as you don't start calling me Douglas. If I did, it would be a compliment. OK, we brought you down here because uh, we've got a, an issue. It's uh, my, no, probably a major, I suppose you'd call it. Nick, talk. OK. Uh, it seems likely that TC induces nemophrenia, even in people who aren't predisposed, everyone who uses it. Shit. 
in one of the non-nemophrenic subjects there were some synaptic connections in the lower part of the hippocampus which persisted in a way that we haven't seen with non-nemophrenics before. Okay. Whom have you told? Just you. Okay. Okay, well, let's not jump to any conclusions. Finish your analysis, but stay on track with the launch. Well, we're not going to delay. I'll have a word with legal and get back to you. Are you okay? You seem distant. I just have a headache. My eyes are hurting. You were telling me that Nicholas is the quiet type. When he doesn't have anything to say. Can he be a bit moody? Can't you see that you're taking on Nicholas's traits just like you did with Jeanette when you were studying her? I don't ever remember you being withdrawn before. Are they aware of this side effect? What about the other testers? Is it happening to them? Are you worried? I think maybe you need to be more objective. Nicholas and Jeanette had a difficult time and you're taking that into yourself. Everything in my life has just been so crap that that memory was the only nice thing. It's my only holiday from crap. Um, how do you want to live your life? I'd like to have the exciting life that I always wanted to have. Maybe travel and do some of the things I would have done with Douglas. Beautiful. Mm. I'm going to take this with me on my trip. So do you see yourself travelling forever? Forever? No, um... I can definitely see myself settling down if I ever found myself finding something worth settling down for. What about you? What do you want out of life? Um... Well, I definitely want someone adventurous who likes to do lots of different things. Something's come up. I got... I got invited to... go do some research out at this reserve in Australia. And, um... I would need to leave pretty soon. It's not something that I planned on, but it's... a tremendous opportunity that I can't turned down. <sighs> Meeting you has been the best accident that's ever happened to me. And the truth is, I don't want to leave because I'm going to miss the hell out of you. Well, I don't want you to either. I don't want you to stay and then resent me for missing out. I know this is going to sound nuts, but is there any way that you would ever consider coming with me? No. I can't. I know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just some guy you met here. I'm asking you to come travel around the world with me. It's insane. I've never experienced anything like that before. I was you. This, this is what I wanted Total Cinema to be. I can't even begin. <laughs> I had no idea you could. It's very early. It doesn't work at all with most people. I thought it might work with you because your brain patterns seem to fit the algorithms, and I thought you'd get a kick out of it. I felt things I never thought I'd ever feel. So simple. 
When you drank that coffee, I hate coffee, and I loved that coffee. See, the VR technologies up till now have all treated nemophrenia as something to avoid or at best ignore. But that's the key. This actually uses nemophrenia as a delivery mechanism. So it only works with nemophrenics? Yeah. But even then, not all. I got to thinking about you, and I think your brain patterns are the way they are because you're at ease with your nemophrenia. You embrace it and you work with it and you play with it. But this won't be part of Total Cinema? No. No, it's a dead end as far as they're concerned. Even forgetting how the tech works, there are legal reasons. You're not allowed to include a real person in a VR experience. I don't know, maybe one day. I really hope so. This takes it to a completely different level. I mean, this shows how nemophrenia can open up such amazing possibilities. Yeah, I mean, imagine what it's going to be like in the future. We'll use nemophrenia creatively. We'll be more open, more understanding. I mean, at one point, Everybody's going to be nemophrenic. VR was supposed to change the world, bring us together. TC was supposed to change the world, bring us together. But all I see is they've made us more and more insular. And that's exactly what Jeanette says, and I agree. Everyone lives in their own bubble of tailored experiences. What is this, the Dark Ages? What's your point? I'm trying to explain my point. You asked me how this chip is any better than Total Cinema. A person can go to the moon and back in TC, but in the physical world, not know their next door neighbor. But with this, you can be your next door neighbor. Feel their concerns, troubles, joys, fears. This, this really could change the world. Well, that's really interesting. But are you aware that you just went from being Jeanette to Nicholas almost in the same breath? What are you talking about? No, you did, honestly. It's really strange to watch. Just remember that you're living your life, not someone else's. Don't let it become an obsession, yes. or you'll end up losing yourself. Don't let them blot you out. You make it sound like I'm crazy. OK, which one of you said that? I kind of know when it's Jeanette and I know when it's Nicholas, but I'm not sure about that one. Was that you? I'm not really, really sure. Don't be a prick. It's me. You have to understand that all me. Well, I'm trying to understand. I really yeah. am. But there's something that you really need to understand. In any relationship, when you meet someone, you're attracted to them, and love is something that develops as you get to know them. You get to love the things that they do, and you start to love the things that you don't like about them as well. But if, if that, that all changes suddenly, it kind of rocks the foundation of what we have. Well, I don't know where I am anymore or what the nature of our relationship is. Or if you'll drift away. It makes me feel vulnerable. I can do it myself. The thing that concerns me, though, is that if Douglas is going to be so difficult to give up, what's the impact on your daughter? Well, I can't see that there's a problem between me and my daughter. In fact, that's not even why I come to this group. I don't come here to talk about her. OK. OK, let me ask you another question. Do you feel you have a good relationship with your daughter? Well, she's only 18 months. OK, well, but how do you relate to her? Well, obviously, I really love her. And I really care about her. But if I'm honest, I, I don't feel like I can deal with her at the moment. Mm -hmm. Since Robert and I split up, she's been spending most of the time with him. I've put her, like, in a deal-with-later box, you know? But um, I'm lucky because I've got Robert, who's willing to take on so much responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, legal have got back to us on this now. 
they want us to collate more concrete data and to ascertain which aspects of the product, if any, are causing the phenomenon. In other words, they need us to be a lot more specific. Okay. Oh, we expected that. Uh, how long are you going to delay the launch so that we can do that? We cannot delay the launch. There's nowhere near enough time to get that kind of data. There's no need to panic, Nick. Nobody's saying you have to get this done before the launch. This can be an ongoing process from now. We are not at all convinced these aberrations can be attributed to TC per se. Quite easily, these subjects could have had delayed nemophrenia. The data could be skewed. You're not willing to take responsibility. That's what this boils down to. Of course we're taking responsibility. We will have the government standard health warnings. They will be beefed up accordingly. A tiny little warning that no one ever reads. People have a right to know. To make up their mind about this. This makes it so obvious that we're trying to hide something. It's the same old stance on nemophrenia, that it's a dirty, shameful disease. It sets back the debate on nemophrenia 20 years. This is not a philosophical debate, Nick. We have a responsible board. We are taking your concerns into consideration, Nick. We will have a program in place, as with other products, to monitor users and to get feedback from them. Gentlemen, this is not about nemophrenia. This is about a fantastic product that we have all worked on very hard. We have to take a line that weighs up all the factors, not just any rogue data that may or may not point to something. I understand entirely this is very much your baby and will always be difficult handing it over. We've been in this situation before and we have a wealth of experience in managing these concerns. Total Cinema will be a defining success and we should all be very happy and proud of it. I know that I'm changing. I understand that might be difficult for you right now. It's much more vivid than anything that's come before. I'm really glad you can see it. It's natural that if you're in it, it's not obvious, but... No, I mean, that's the point. That's what I've realized. That's why this tech is gonna change everything. Imagine a future where you can design your own personality construct yourself from aspects of other people that suit how you want to be as a person. I think I want to make that the main focus of my conference presentation. I've been doing a lot of thinking too, about what you said. It really does have a lot of merit. I'm so proud of you. I was just afraid of losing you. You won't lose me. I'm sorry you felt like that. <laughs> That's nice. Would you keep in touch with me? Even if it's just once in a while. I want to, but I don't know if it's just going to make me more sad. 
missing you and having you not come back. I'm afraid to keep in contact. Well, I would hope that if I did come back, that would always be a place for me in your life. Okay, so we'll um, see you next week. Okay. Not coming into work next week. What? I'm thinking of quitting. What, before the launch? They're going to go ahead and do whatever they want, regardless of what we say. What about your family? What about a baby? I'm taking a week off to think about it. I I'll be leaving early today. You can finish off Anna's tests on your own. What did Michael say? He was quiet for a bit. Then he started swearing and threatening me. It was actually quite funny. What else can I say? If, if you were to quit too, imagine both designers quit before the launch. I mean, what kind of message would that send? I can't just... What good can we do on the outside? A lot more than we can do on the inside. I don't know what else to do. Have you talked it over with Julia? We've got other things to talk about. I really don't want you to leave. Just... Go and take whatever break you need and... Come back and talk to me before you decide anything, okay? Just... Please, don't do anything rash. Nick. It's carnage back at head office. Is everything going okay here? Well, you would probably know, wouldn't you, because you've been watching us. Our system's been hacked and reprogrammed to record 24-7. That's not prohibited, Nick. Not prohibited? No, Nick, it isn't. I can't believe you're being so blasé about this. Would well, you have something to hide? Well, tell me, you didn't just say that. So, you thought me and Will are going to rock the boat, so you took it upon yourself to hack my lab and spy on us. You and Will behaved completely inappropriately in last week's meeting with David. Quite frankly, you embarrassed me in front of him. 
getting up on your high horse. Because he's now wondering who the fuck these guys think they are. I'm trying to buffer this you. This is important, okay? This product's gonna launch, and sooner or later people are gonna realize that it does induce nephrenia. We don't know that. And I'm gonna be seen as the chief architect of the whole thing. I've made no secret of my views on nephrenia. People are gonna think I did this on purpose. <laughs> this is my life, Michael. This is fantasy, Nick. Stop panicking. To be honest, it's Will that we're concerned about. Why? He came to see me just before he went on leave. And he said a couple of things that linked you with FLM. What are you talking about? Future of the Liberated Mind. I know what it stands for. What exactly did he say? He said you were in cahoots with them. Cahoots? He, he actually used the word cahoots? Yeah, look, we don't believe him. He came to see me. He was particularly abrasive and rude. And in a roundabout way, he said that if we don't give him a serious promotion and a pay rise, he's going to go public with the new data. I don't understand how a man I've worked with for seven years suddenly changes like that. Well, that's people, Nick. To be honest, we don't think he's thought it through at all. All of yesterday's lab recordings were corrupted, the day that Will goes on leave. In and of itself, that's suspicious. Look, the reason I'm here. We're close to the launch now, and we're not taking any chances with anything. The main bulk of the work is being done elsewhere anyway, so we're moving you back to the main building. You've got to be kidding me. Look, for fuck's sake, Nick, I'm tired of you arguing all the time. This is how it's going to be. An audit team is coming down here in a bit to start the process of logging everything here. Data, equipment, everything. You're going to help them. As soon as that's done, we'd set a date for the move. Launch time is always stressful. Just calm down and let it go. I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I completely forgot our meeting. Okay, you look really anxious. Is the launch going okay? Uh, um, sorry, I'm going to have to cancel. Uh, um, I'm going to close down the lab for the day. Uh, I'll, I'll walk you up. you something. I want you to present my research at the conference. Why can't we plan to do it together? You want me to be positive, but I'm not positive. I'd be lying if I said I was. The systems are shutting down. Even the recordings are affected. I don't know how glitches in the images, the sounds out of sync. Well, take it out. Your research is almost done anyway. I mean, just remove it. You know that's not the cause. I'm not giving up on you. If there is any other avenue to investigate, then we're going to do it. I don't have time. Please, I need you to promise you'll present my work. It means everything to me. It means everything to the whole world. 
I need to do it for Nicholas. He would have been so excited to be here now. He is. Promise me you'll present it. I promise. Didn't expect you back till Monday. What did you decide? I don't know yet. What's, what's going on here? What did you say to Michael? I haven't spoken to him yet, I just... No, what did you tell him about me? Before you left, about FLM? What's he said to you? That you told him I was in cahoots with FLM. <laughs> cahoots? Oh, come on, don't... I'm no good at this. Mind games, trying to work people out. Just tell me, okay? So you fed him a load of bullshit about me. To do what? And FLM didn't contact you. So what? I told you, I never replied. I tried to make it seem like we were both going to quit. To, to strengthen our position. What, by accusing me of leaking company secrets? I was wrong. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. And you asked him for a promotion. And you used me as a bargaining chip to get more money. You that greedy? It's not about greed. Bullshit. I thought we were friends. Now there's nothing anymore. I find that piss off. Julia had some scans. The baby is... There's some problems. There's a 98% chance the baby will be born. Nemophrenic. I wish. She's gonna need some expensive care. Probably for the rest of her life and I don't have insurance to cover that sort of thing, so... Either I win the lottery or... I upset a few people. Why didn't you tell me? We don't need charity. And if your big plan doesn't work? <laughs> I'm sorry about the baby. I am genuinely. out of here. You are quitting. I don't want to be anywhere near this launch. What are you going to do? Keep working. This isn't exactly what I imagined Total Cinema to be anyway. What about funding? Work smaller, slower. Something that actually means something to me. I have zero influence here. I wish things were different. Yeah, me too. I don't think there is anything next. I don't think anything happens. Everything just stops. Big, empty nothingness. That's good, not bad. You can't be scared if I'm not aware, can I? How are you doing? If I start to think about how it affects me, it just makes me feel selfish. I think you'd benefit from the chip. <laughs> Who, me? Yes, you, you perfectly rounded man. If you could see through my eyes, feel what I'm feeling, you'd know that I don't want you to be strong, to put up a wall. You'd know I'd want to see that we're in this together. You want me 
to tell you my fears. Yes. You're going to be in a lot of pain. And now I'm going to lose you. I love you so much. I'm scared too. But it helps me to know we're in the same boat. You love me and I love you. I'm not going to say goodbye. You don't have to. I'll always stay with you. Even after I'm long gone. Does that mean I don't have to crawl into my black hole? No. That's part of my master plan. Well, how about we never say it? Let's just never say goodbye. Is there anything where you associate um, Douglas and your daughter together? No. But I suppose if I were to put them in the same sentence, then if Douglas had never been taken away from me, and if he'd been real, and if we'd stayed together, then I guess it would mean that It's okay, take your time. I'm so sorry. I'm glad you could guess it would mean that Grace. Oh, fuck, I can't. So, what, what does it mean? What does it mean about Grace? She wouldn't have been born. Okay, and I can see obviously that is something that would have a big impact on you. Can I just push you a little further? If I had asked you to choose between Douglas and your daughter, how does that feel? Um, well, obviously I'd have to choose my daughter. Did you enjoy the process? Yeah. I loved it. So, what's next for you? Well, the launch and then further development. Are you happy with it? Yeah. I don't think you are. There's so much more to you. You're wasted here. Your recording technology, the things you originally wanted Total Cinema to be? That's not ideal, but what can I do? There's something I've been wanting to tell you. Have you heard of FLM? You're a member? Yes. You could get us both in a lot of trouble. I know. I'm sorry. Nick, we share the same beliefs, the same values, but you... You have it in your power to actually do something better for society. 
With the technology you've developed, think of the things nemophrenics might be able to do. What we might be able to become. It doesn't belong to me anymore. Even if Memofilm decide to develop this, they'd never do anything useful with it. We could do amazing things with this technology. Especially if you work with us. You can find a way to take it away from them. I believe in you. Nick, that's the future, right there. Don't let them own it. Well, it sounds like to me, being happy means being free. So as you enter this next phase of your life, you need to make sure that you don't get pulled into a direction that you don't want to go. When you have the chance to be whoever and whatever you want. That's the beauty of it. It's, it's like a fresh start. I'd really like it if you'd get the implant as well. Continue my work. See the world through my eyes. I don't know if I can do it. I'm not as strong as you. The effort trying to be alive. I'll be all on my own. That's why you need to do it. What you'll be going through will be of immense value. And it means I'll still be here with you. For that, I'll do anything. In finishing, I'd like you to keep in mind Robin. Not the data, not the results, the person. My Robin, who was also my Jeanette and my Nicholas. A person who became people. And while you keep her in your mind's eye, I'd like to tell you a story. A myth from the other side of the world and the other side of history. When these people died, it's said that their spirits didn't go to heaven, but could pass freely into the lives of those remaining. They could flow from one person to the next, enriching them with their wisdom. Robin always liked that story. And this technology that started with Nicholas and continued through Robin could be said to finally make that myth a reality. I'm so proud of the past that she helped lay out. She was different, unique. And perhaps in ages to come, she'll be recorded as the first of a new evolutionary step for us humans in our ability to connect with ourselves and each other. Homo mnemonicus, perhaps. I don't know. I just knew her as Robin. Thank you.